Uh, I'd now like to welcome Monica Quaintance to the stage. She will talk about technical developments of permissioned blockchains. Monica. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm actually going to do a tiny bit of a bait and switch. I am going to talk about permission blockchains, but I'm also going to talk about how they can interact with public blockchains in a structure that we're calling hybrid blockchains. So let's get into it. So I work for a company called Cadena, and Cadena, the whole idea behind our entire stack is that you, it should be easy for you to be able to develop an application for whatever you need to do on blockchain. This goes back to Dan's whole idea. Of like, everything is super complicated, and you don't have scalability, and you don't have interoperability, and all, none of these things work. But instead of stapling a whole bunch of different technologies on top of each other, we've crafted a single technology solution, and hopefully people are going to use it to create really awesome applications that allow you to hook into both permissioned and public blockchains at the same time. So this whole idea is that smart contracts could be great for business if people knew that they could trust them. And so far in smart contract land with Ethereum and all of these other projects that have had so smart contracts so far, you have a, a lack of trust in that whole ecosystem. And our speculation is that because many of these technologies were originally created as thought experiments or research, that they weren't crafted for business use cases in mind. So we came out of the JP Morgan blockchain research labs, and the whole idea behind Cadena is that you should be able to use these technology for business in a way that you can trust. So blockchain for like 30 seconds, remember you have blocks, they're linked using cryptography. And the important part here is that when you have a block that contains information, it contains a hash of previous history, which means you can't go back and modify your existing transactions. This is why people like it for auditing, people like it for tracking transactions. And when you have a blockchain, your, your information can be ownerless if you want it to be. And whether that means you have a consortium model with competitors where you don't want to have your competitor owning your data, or whether you have a public blockchain and you want it to be completely ownerless, this is one of the fundamental points why you would want to use a blockchain over, say, a database. So smart contracts. In a permission system, private blockchain, only users with permission can actually see what's going on. In a public blockchain, anyone can replicate. And you can imagine a world in which you would want an application where you would want to have your cake and eat it too. You would want to be able to have private data that you know that not everybody is going to be able to see, but you also would want to be able to go out and access the kind of high liquidity, fast transaction settlement, massive number of potential customers, borderless transactions that you get from public blockchain. So if you could have a system that could give you both, that's, that's what we're trying to build here with, with Cadena. So I'm going to go through the three elements of our stack and then give you an example of one of our clients and why they are using that particular part of the stack. So we have a public blockchain. We launched Testnet in March. And it's a proof-of-work-based blockchain, but it's also a scalable proof-of-work-based blockchain. We're basically the only company out there that's building a new proof-of-work chain that has a different scalability mechanism. Everybody else has decided that they're going proof-of-stake. We're just super old school in this regard, and we think that proof-of-work just works. Uh, permission blockchain is called Scalable BFT, and it's in the same family of Tendermint and these other uh, BFT-based systems where you have a voting mechanism. Smart contract, we have our own smart contract language, and this is really the special sauce of what's going on at Cadena. It's, the idea is with Pact that you shouldn't do things on a blockchain that, you don't, that aren't safe to do on a blockchain, and I'll give you some examples of that coming up. In terms of the scope of other people in the world doing blockchain things, we have the same security of proof of work as your Zcash and your Bitcoins. We have a similar, we have smart contracts like Hyperledger and Corda, and we're designed for scale like Definity and Hashgraph, but we have all three of those things all together all at the same time. All right, so smart contracts. Why would you even want to do smart contracts in the first place? 
for smart contracts, if you can do them correctly, they're not really a contract at all. They're more like a charter, like a code of governance. And if you could have a smart contract that actually updates itself to follow the business logic as it changes, as it migrates, then you could full, deeply fulfill the intent through code. And so that's what we're trying to do with bringing smart contracts to business. And so PACT is our smart contract language. And originally, our, uh, the guy who wrote the first version of our smart contract language, our CTO, Stuart. Stuart wrote a trading system for JP Morgan that allowed traders to take the ideas that they were thinking of in terms of trading algorithms and turn them into code. We're taking this idea and bringing it to smart contracts. So if you could do things with smart contracts that you actually trusted, then you could have things like multi-party escrow and you don't have to have somebody in the middle. You can tokenize assets and settle them all over the world without having to worry about overhead and clearing houses. You don't even have to trade when the markets are open because there are no markets anymore. You can have APIs that transfer all kinds of information and have data payloads and money payloads inside of them. But nobody trusts smart contracts like right now because there have been a bunch of bugs and exploits like the DAO hack, which drained a bunch of ether because there were recursive calls inside of a smart contract, like the parity wallet problem on Ethereum, where there was a central smart contract library that contained everybody's information and somebody deleted it, and so now nobody can get to their money anymore. You wouldn't ever have these in an enterprise system. None of that would ever fly, which is why we've built an enterprise-grade smart contract system. And it doesn't allow you to do stupid things. So we have a client right now that's using PACT to actually put patient data on a ledger. And the idea here is that you want to put patient data on a permission blockchain, and you want to be able to go in and modify it. That's why PACT is the smart contract language that they chose for this project, because unlike Solidity, say, where you can't go in and modify your smart contracts, you can upgrade a PACT smart contract. And I don't need to tell you technically why you can do that. You can just take that on value. And then if you want to talk to me afterwards about how it works, we can do that. <laughs> and so this, our client is using patient data to anchor your information. And then they're doing attestation of vaccination on the public network. So this is an example of a hybrid blockchain application. The permission part of our stack is scalable BFT. And scalable BFT is a blockchain that is designed to scale on its own as a permission blockchain. It's basically Tendermint that makes some assumptions about how your network functions, and then if it fails, it fails back to Tendermint. And why you would use a blockchain for your private application instead of a database, blockchains allow you to have data sharing automatically, replicating. And you can have every transaction that goes on get signed by somebody. So imagine that you have some auditors and you have some third party people that are involved in your, say you have a, an insurance company. That's a hint. I'm going to tell you about our insurance company client later. You have an insurance company and you have some auditors for your insurance company. You can have the auditors sign transactions as you put them on the chain. So then you know who and when made these data insertions into your project. So scalable BFT works natively with PACT, and it scales up to a heck of a lot of nodes automatically, more nodes than you would ever really want for a private blockchain, because every node is somebody else replicating your data. So for example, I think JP Morgan is replicating JPM coin across like five different business units, and they're using it for their payment system right now. So sort of like that, only instead of five nodes, you can have hundreds of them. And we're also on AWS Marketplace. So our insurance client is uh, using the permission blockchain to create a data shared pool among it and its other co-insurance people. So right now, when they settle a large insurance policy, let's say it's for an airline, for example, if you have a large claim, it's going to be 17% paid by this guy and 25% paid by this lady. And all of those settlement claims right now, are they send each other in paper. Like actually, they, they mail the paper and then somebody has to key them in. So this is a huge technological leap for this. And the eventual goal of this system is to actually have these payments settle automatically using the blockchain system. So this is why you might want to use a permission blockchain instead of a database. 
And then Chainweb is our public blockchain, which we launched Testnet in March. And so Chainweb uses the idea of proof of work and Bitcoin and Nakamoto consensus in order to settle transactions. And it is a permissionless system that works all around the world. But because of the way Chainweb works, and usually I give like an hour long talk just on Chainweb, so I'm not going to talk about how it works. You're just going to have to take it that it works and we can talk about it later. But there are many chains that all run at the same time and everybody uses all of the chains freely and equally. It's not like I own this chain and you own that chain. It's all part of the same network. And we think that proof of work, if you can figure out how to scale it, is a great solution for the kinds of activities that you want to do on a proof of work chain, on a public blockchain. You can have people buying tokens that represent real value anywhere in the world. You don't have to worry about settlement. You don't have to worry about borders. You don't have to worry about when the market is open. And if you could figure out how to put real data without exposing yourself onto this public chain, then you could actually figure out how to make distributed applications that make real value. So, for example, we have a fintech client right now, and they are a company that has made ETFs for many years, and they are using our technology to use AML KYC on the permission blockchain and tokenize a real asset, like a very conventional asset, and then sell those tokens for people that clear their AML KYC on the public blockchain. And so this, you, you have safe custody of your personal data, but you get to have your cake, eat it too, with redu reduced fees, settlement times, you can connect to investors all over the world, you can have global access, you don't have to wait to trade until the market is open. These are all benefits that you can get from trying to connect both sides of the application, both permissionless and public. So right now we have an insurance company client, a healthcare client, real estate stuff, fintech stuff, banking stuff. If you can actually have smart contracts that you can trust that you want to put in your application, we're finally starting to see people using blockchain for real exciting application development. So this year we are launching Chainweb at the end of the year. We are between now and then we have a series of milestone test nets that we're planning on rolling out. So if you're interested in mining or testing the test net, come talk to me later. We have a Pact developer community. We're rolling out all of our videos on how to use Pact and how to do the kinds of things that we want people to do in terms of application development. And we're working on a bunch of projects. And if you'd like to know more about them, I can talk about some of them. I can't talk about most of our client names because enterprise NDAs, but I'm happy to tell you whatever I can. Yeah, that's it. <laughs>